In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the brand new Blood Bowl 2nd Edition Starter Box. I'm going to be looking at what's inside, and then at the end of the video, we're going to be looking at what the models are like once they're all put together. Stay tuned. So here is the brand new Blood Bowl Season 2 Edition box. Now, it looks like it has an, like a throwback to the retro days. It has like the, with the colors of the old time and the layout and stuff like that. It looks really good. I love the little kind of Blood Bowl official merchandise seal down here, which is really good. If you flip it over to have a look at the back. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this box is that it is pretty heavy. There's a lot of heavy stuff in this box. We'll get to that in a second. But the back of it, uh, it's really good. You get a lot of really cool pictures, a lot of detailed pictures of the models, uh, a list of all the stuff you get. So the box looks really good from the outside. It looks like it's going to be a really good box once we open it up. So once we get this open, so the first thing we're going to see is the poster that comes with it. Now this came with the first box as well that I have up on the wall there. It's not the exact same. This one is more like what the front cover is, but on the back it has pictures of all the Blood Bowl teams, which is really good. I really like this, but I think I prefer this to go up on my wall. But it is kind of cool to have a picture of all the Blood Bowl teams. So I have the Skaven team, I have the Human team, I have the Orc team, them two are from the starter set. Obviously we have the two new teams from here, and then we have the Necromantic Horror team, which I ordered with this box as well, so I'll keep an eye out for that in the future. So first up we have, well second up, we have the instructions, which is a very, very neat, very compact four pages on how to put everything together. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because I'm going to wait until we get to the models, which is what we have here. So there's a lot of, a lot of single sprues in this box, which was a bit of a surprise. So you have Griff Oberwald, which looks like it's all on one sprue. That is the human's star player, so he's on one sprue in the red. Then we have three green sprues. Three small green sprues, well four, four actually. These two are for uh, Varag, which is the Orc special player, that big huge muscly guy. And then the other two, it looks like it's for the trained trial for the Orcs as well. Then we have two referees, which is something that we didn't get in the last starter box. And then, of course, we have the Ogre for the human teams. So that's kind of like all the special players there. Then we have two sprues for the rest of the Ogre team, which I thought it would have been a little bit more than just two sprues, but everything really fits on there. Very compact sprue, not much space left over. Um, then we have two more sprues for the human team, which is in the red. And, and again, it's very compact. You have your coins, you have your markers and all your players and stuff like that. Very compact. Uh, very very busy the only bad thing is I hope it's not gonna to be too hard to clip out pieces because everything is so tight in there so I'm gonna to have to move these to here for a minute because well then we have the markers which is like your measurement tool your turn token and stuff like that now what makes this box so heavy is this this is the official rule book which is hardback it is heavy it is a beautiful book it even has its own uh, thing to keep track of your pages and um, this has a lot in it it can seem very intimidating because there is a lot of rules for blood ball uh, like here you have the, uh, this is the end part of the rules which is like starts with the draft uh, marking players the fans the weather that's all stuff that even happens before the game starts kicking them while they're down there's a lot of rules in this a lot to read through you have your roster pages um, so a lot to get through but a very cool part of this is which looks like it's from page 4 onwards is 4 to 18 it looks like it has a lot of history for Blood Bowl so you're getting a little bit of the lore which is going to be great to read through I, I don't know any Blood Bowl lore I don't know any of the history with the teams or anything like that so it looks pretty interesting there's a chapter here called Fallout and Collapse uh, greed and scandal So that's going to be very interesting to read through at the very end of the book You do get to look at uh, The star players well you have like all the rosters all the teams and stuff like that everything is in there But then at the very end you have a look at the star players that you can buy for your team and everything like that It's a very very immersive game Buying players buying star players players can die on you 
players can get injured. So there is a lot in it. It's a very cool game. I've only played it on the PlayStation 4. Um, so I kind of know like a basic version of the rules. I can't go too detailed into them. But it is very good. So then you have two cheat sheets which I think you definitely need. Uh, you have your sequence of plays. Post game sequence. The turnover. The weather table. The kickoff event table. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this. Pass and move and hand off. Foul, blitz. Throw a teammate, you can even throw a teammate. Your pass action. Um, it, it is very intimidating, but uh, once you kind of get used to it, you'll nail all these down pretty quick and you'll get used to how it works then. Here you have the casualty table. Uh, the easiest one you can get is badly hurt. The player misses the rest of the game, suffers no long term effect. Um, and you can get all the way up to dead, which is a player is dead. He's gone from your roster, can't play anymore, you're going to have to replace him. And then you can get like lasting injuries, which is like a head injury, you can, which will lower your armor value, your movement and stuff like that, and your strength. So a very cool thing in this, it has some of the players on here in the bottom as well. So that cheat sheet is going to be very handy. Now here you have all your bases, all of these are the same size, there's no different sizes in Blood Bowl because it's all on measured squares you'll see on the pitch as well later on the only weird thing is that these are slot bases and the models aren't for slot bases so i don't know why maybe they just had these are the only ones they're wanting to get rid of these bases or something like that you get your blood ball dice which is the furthest thing from normal dice i think you get was it one two two normal dice and then you get these dice to see what kind, what kind of happens you get like an injury a push um a hit and you get two different colors for the two different teams and then finally in the box here we have the pitch and the dugout now you get two dugouts uh, the pitch is double sided so you get two different sides of it and um, here you have your dugout for i think the humans i don't think it makes a difference really i think you can use these for any of them there's nothing really that sticks out too much that shows that as humans or orcs so it's full of details you have your uh, turns here as well uh, so yeah, really cool looking at that. The pitch then is very heavy, very big pitch, which you can see here on the screen. The best thing about these pitches is they're hard. They're, if they get damaged, it's fine because the damage is probably going to do very little for them. Uh, it's very big and it's going to look great once it's all set up, full of amazing details. And it's double sided, you know, you can't go wrong with a double anything that's double sided gaming mat a blood ball pitch yeah there is a lot of cool details on these so whatever kind of pitch you want to use whether you want to play on the grass or you want to play on the concrete and um, there is plenty to choose from so i'm going to put these models together stay tuned for a quick second and we'll see what all these guys are like once they're all built up okay so here is everything built up on the huge blood ball pitch i forgot how big this thing is it's just under three by two feet and it is reversible i'm gonna try and flip it here no but it is really nice the pitch looks amazing it's full of details it's like heavy i don't know cardboard or something like that but whatever it is it's like really strong it's going to last and like it's not massive but it folds up into one square which is like this section here so what it unravels to be like is pretty cool it's full of amazing detail you have like little things around the pitch like football boots gloves trapdoor there's like weapons over there there's some scave and the shoulder pads and all that really amazing looking pitch and you do get the dugouts as well which i couldn't even fit on my desk i forgot about the dugouts here so they're really full of detail as well two different ones uh two different images on the sides so it really ties it all together as well. So I started off building the arcs. Now these were, they were okay to put together. Nothing really too hard, nothing too easy. It was pretty straightforward. Just a few little parts where it's like one of the arms, you have to kind of like do it by eye a little bit. What I do recommend is going to the Games Workshop website, looking at uh, these on the 360 view, just to make sure the arms are in the right place. You don't want to be too low or too high because then the shoulder pad might not fit on properly or something like that. But I started off with Varag, which is an amazing model. He is huge. The orcs are huge. These I absolutely love these models. I'm really looking forward to getting these painted to see what they're like to paint with. Now the models are duplicates, so you have like three orcs, uh, two sets of three, and the same with the goblins as well. But 
the only kit or the only parts of this army that you do have multi parts is for the goblins and the orcs which you can change their heads some of the goblins you can change their arms and um, but everything else is kind of the exact same it's just you have a nice little bit of a change with them um, I really do love the goblins. I think they would look amazing as a conversion for other armies. They're full of little details, little crazy looking guys as you'd expect. The only model in this entire box that I wasn't too sure about was this guy, the Troll. Simply because when you're looking at pictures of this, it's a really awkward looking model. You can't really get the best look at it from an angle. Uh, just by looking at a picture. But when you're holding and when you're looking at it, and I knew it was going to be like this when I did it. Um, it's going to look so much better when you have it. Um, it's a really weird looking pose from certain angles. But then when you turn it around you can see it much better. Um, but I really do like this model. I'm looking forward to painting him up. We have then the Imperial team. Which were... Yeah, they were pretty easy to put together. There was no big problems. Except for... What's his name? The main guy, Griff Oberwald. Now, with Griff Oberwald... To tell you the glue, there's like his head is here, which is, let me zoom this in for this, so we can get a look at him a little bit better. Now with Griff Oberwald, his head is like half a head, it's more like a face. So it recommends gluing the face in and then putting the helmet in over that. And it has to slot in a really, really awkward way. I couldn't get it to work um, without really bending the face or making it. Uh, look a bit funky so I had to end up taking the head off putting it into the helmet first and then glue the whole top part onto the neck as well so I'd highly recommend doing the face and the helmet first before gluing it to the body once you get to that part of building this model you will 100% know what I'm talking about you will get it then but overall he's a really nice model I haven't glued his eagle on because I'm going to wait until I'm getting him ready to paint because I don't, I even off a feeling that eagle is going to fall off and I'm going to get it knocked off and everything like that but other than that, the rest of the team, um, the Imperial Trollers, the Bodyguards, uh, the Linemen, even one of the Linemen are women, which I really like. Uh, is a woman? Is women. And the best part about the Imperial models is all of them are different sizes. Like, you have the Linemen, which are kind of like, or not the Linemen, uh, the Trollers, which are kind of like cocky looking guys. They're like your, your normal, average looking man. And then you have the Bodyguards, which one of the bodyguards, well two of them since they're the exact same, is like a big chunky guy. The other bodyguard, he's more like a normal guy. Then you have your retainer linemen. They're all kind of differently sized when it comes to like the female one. She's a lot skinnier, a lot more slim. And then of course, you get the ogre, which is an absolute beast of a model. He's a lot bigger than the other guys. The only thing I wish that I had done is to make Griff Oberwald stand out a little bit more. Like make him just a little bit taller than everyone else, a little bit more bulkier, just to make him stick out as a star player. We come to the referees, which didn't come in the last box. We have a dwarf and I think it's an elf, it's either an elf or a human. And um, these are actually called biased referees, I think, yeah. So one of them is holding like a booking card, like a yellow or red card. Other guy, the dwarf guy, looks like he has like a whistle and a book and everything on his back, so... I have to read up a little bit more about what's the difference with these guys, what's with the book and everything like that. But they're really nice. It, the two referees are a great addition to the box. Something that didn't come with the last one. Um, finally, the dice that come with them, you know, are your standard blood ball dice. But I wanted to quickly mention them because they look amazing. That kind of uh, see-through effect on them with the blue and the green really do look really nice. So overall, I really like this box. I would recommend the Blood Ball box. I think it's really good. The players, the models, everything looks great. The rule book, even though it's a lot of rules to get through, the lore and all in it looks pretty interesting, so I wouldn't mind getting, uh, getting a chance to read through that. But overall, I recommend the box, but make sure to check it out for yourself. Check out the link below to get the box at a discounted price from Element Games. And if you like this review, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.